This is a video to demonstrate how to do a linear programming question for the Decision 1 exam. What we've got here is Edexcel D1 May 2010 and this is question number 7. So what we've got here is uh, Keith is organising two types of children's activity, sports, mad and circus fun, and he wants to work out how many times to offer each activity. X is the number of times of sports mad and Y is circus fun. Two constraints are X is less than or equal to 15 and Y is greater than 6. Constraints are shown on the graph, so here are the two constraints, and the rejected regions are both shaded out. What we've got to do is explain why y equals 6 is shown as a dotted line. Now it may not show too well on the um, video, but this is a dotted line going across here at y equals 6, and we've got to explain why it's dotted. Well, if we come back to the um, uh, constraint, we can see it's y is greater than 6, not y is greater than or equal to 6. And so we need to explain what's going on there. And of course what it means is that we are not allowed to have values on that line. So if I was writing the answer I would write something like um, so that values with y equals 6 are not allowed. Another way of writing it would be to show that it is a strict inequality. Oops, inequality. There. So just saying that we're not allowed to have things on this line. Okay. Then we get two more constraints. 3x is greater than or equal to 2y and 5x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 80. We've got to add two lines and shading to represent the inequalities and determine the feasible region. So what I would do first of all is I would work with these equations a little bit to get them in a format that I prefer to work with. So 3x is greater than or equal to 2y. Well, of course, that tells me 2y is less than or equal to 3x, and y is less than or equal to 3 over 2x. So writing it in that y equals mx plus c format makes it a little bit nicer for drawing the graph. So then when I draw that, of course, y, uh, thinking about it as y equals mx plus c, it's going to go through the origin. I've got a gradient of 3 over 2, so the change in y over the change in x is um, 3 over 2, so for every 2 units across it's going to go up by 3, so we're going to go across another 2, up another 3, and of course our line is going to go through these points. So drawing that line in, uh, getting that all nice and lined up, try and be as accurate as you can. There's that line there. We want y to be less than that, so we don't want the part above. So we'll cross out that section there. Working with the next one, 5x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 80. So I'm going to turn that into 4y is greater than or equal to minus 5x plus 80. And I'm going to turn that into y is greater than or equal to minus 5 over 4x plus 20. So, of course, that's going to be going through the y-axis at 20. <coughs> and for every 4 units across, it is going to go down 5. So we're going to go across 4, down 5, we go to there. Across another 4, down another 5, we go to there. And, of course, we're going through at 8, 10, which must mean we're going to go through at... Uh, 16, 0. So there is our line going through each of those. And we want to have greater than or equal to that, we want above the line, so we're going to cross out this section here, and uh, we are asked to label it as R. So this section here is our R in that area there. It's always a good idea as well to label the lines that you're representing. So this one was, um, what was it, 3x is greater than or equal to 2y, and this one is representing 5x plus 4y is greater than or equal to 80. So we've labeled those them as well, just in case the examiner wants to see that. The next part of the question gives us information. Each sports mad activity costs £500 and each circus fun activity costs £800. Keith wishes to minimise the total cost, write down the objective function 
C in terms of X and Y. And of course, what we want to do here, this is question C, we want to minimize C, the cost. Now, the sports mad costs 500, and we're told that sports mad is the variable X. So the total cost for all of the sports mad activities will be 500 X and the circus fun is activity Y, and each of those costs 800, so we're going to add that to the total cost, making 500X plus 800Y as the function we're going to minimise. The last part of the question asks us to actually solve the problem now. So we've got to use our graph to determine the number of times each activity should be offered and the total cost. You must show sufficient working to make your method clear. So I'm going to use a um, ruler method in the sense that I'm going to draw a line and then move it. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to think about this particular function here. 5,000, sorry, 500x, whoops, 500x plus 800y is equal to some amount of profit or some amount of cost. Sorry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a value which both 500 and 800 go into. So if my total cost was 4,000, what would the values of x and y be that would satisfy this? Well, I can find some quite easily. Um, x could be uh, 8, y could equal 5. So that's giving me, when x is 8 and y is 5, those are two points, uh, there we go, on that objective line. Okay, so that's the objective line. Anywhere on, the, on that line will give us a cost of 4,000, no matter what value of x or y I choose. What I should have said here is that when x equals 8, y equals 0, and when y equals 5, x equals 0. And these are giving the coordinates of the endpoints. Could, of course, choose any value. If I'd chosen, let's say, 8,000, for this, then what value of x would I have to give? Uh, x equals 16 and y equals 10 would give me um, the coordinates of the endpoints of this line as well. So x equals 16 is over here and y equals 10. They are two values that work, so they give me the endpoints of my line and everywhere along here all the coordinates will give me the values that I want. Now, as I'm moving this line, the first place on the objective region, or the feasible region, is this point here. Now, that is not integer solutions. And we need to know how many times the activity happens, so we can't have that as a solution. What I'm going to do now is zoom in a little bit so we can see what's going on in this section. So now, looking at this area a little bit closer, this would be our solutions if we were allowed non-integer values, but of course we're looking for the amount of times an activity can happen. So if we look at all the integer values around here, there's one here. Remember from our scale that uh, one big square is two units, so we've got an integer solution there, and there, and there, and there, and there. These are all integer solutions, each of those dots. So what the question is, of course, is which one comes up first? So if I take my ruler in my first objective line position and move it to my second one, trying to keep the gradient the same, okay, and then the question becomes which one do we get to first? Well, we get to this one first, but of course this is on that dotted line that we had in our first question. Why are we not allowed values on there? Well, because we're not allowed y to equal 6. So we've got to go past that one and get to the next one. And of course this value here is the next one. So this is our solution, that one there. And this corresponds to uh, y equaling 11 and, sorry, x equaling 11 and y equaling 7. So if we put that in, what we've actually got is x equals 11, y equals 7. This is our um, optimal solution. And we are asked to calculate what the value of C is. C equals 500 times 11 plus 800 times 7, which is 11,100.
and we're done.